DJ Pro's new 5.2 update gave us a whole bunch of new features and some new settings. So in this video, I'm going to share with you my recommended settings for DJ Pro for the Mac. I'll explain what they do and you can decide for yourself if they fit with your style of DJ. So in order to get to the settings in the app for the Mac, we're going to bring our mouse all the way up and then go over here to where it says DJ Pro. Click that, we get a drop down menu and then over here is our settings. I'm going to be talking about the settings in this actual settings section and we're going to start with general and the first one that I want to talk about is start playback if you have this selected so it was off now it's on if you have this selected every time you load up a new song so I'm going to go And you saw as soon as I loaded up the song, it started playing automatically. Now, some people may be used to this setting. Some people may use it on other softwares or be used to it from DJing with vinyl. For me, it really throws me off. I like to load up the track and then have time to decide which cue point I'm using and where I'm going to start the track. So I would recommend leaving this off. When it's off and you load a track in, it does it automatically play and then you can press play press pause on your own so decide if that's what you want i would highly recommend leaving it off but some people disagree next is going to be reset eq fx and tempo so this means that every time that you load up a different track it is going to reset the the effects and reset everything and then if you want to set effects or change the tempo you can so right here i changed the tempo i lowered it down 14 percent. now i'm going to load up a new song and you see it jumps back. If we put that off, we load up a new song, and you see it's gonna stay with the minus tempo, all the all the effects, and the tempo and EQ are going to be be the same as it was on the track before. Now this might work for some styles of DJing. I don't really know an example of why you would want to keep this off, keep this off. So I would recommend keeping it off. So we got start playback off. We got reset EQ. I recommend keeping it on. Now the next one is protect active deck. This is a good safety feature to make sure you don't do one of the biggest DJ mistakes, which is tomato. That's when you're playing music and then you maybe you cut out the volume or you ejected the wrong track. Uh, whatever it is, the reason is you cause there to be music and then no music and everyone stares at you and it's really embarrassing. So with this off, this song on the right here is playing. Now I'm going to go load up a new track on that same deck. And just like that, track starts playing, we loaded up a new deck. Uh, sometimes you can accidentally choose the wrong side. A lot of stuff's going on when you're DJing, and you can make that mistake. Now if we put Protect Active Deck on, this track on the right's playing. We go to load up a track, and we get this notification. It says, right deck protected. You are about to load a song onto an active deck do you want to proceed so if you wanted to do that you could just press load or if it was a mistake you could press cancel the audience doesn't know anything happened and you didn't do a dj mistake so it's just an extra safety feature and i don't know why you would keep it off so let's put it on this setting i'm almost positive that it doesn't automatically start with it on so you're gonna have to change it manually so these three are gonna be on these all I would leave the way they are in the sync mode. Jump to cue points. I would leave that at cue point one. Tempo slider range. So if you press this, we have a couple of options. If you put it at six, now you see this track is originally 123 BPM. So now if I move move the BPM slider all the way up, it'll just go to 130, go down to 115. Now the lower percentage you have, the more precise control you're going to have over this slider, especially if you're just using the laptop or if you're using a smaller controller with smaller tempo sliders. This might be easier, but for me, I like to do pretty decent BPM jumps, so I would say to keep it at 25, so now I could go up to 150, down to 92. You have a little bit more range, and you still have pretty good control not as much as the lower ones, but decent control. If you put it all the way up to 75, it's almost impossible to get the exact BPM. 
So we're going to keep it at 25. Again, this is my opinion. If you never do big BPM jumps and you like to stay in the same BPM range, then you could keep it at 8 or 10. But I would keep it at 25. Play and pause. So this means when you press play, how many, how much time it'll take for the track to build up to the correct BPM. So for this example, it's at 123. Start time zero. Press it and it starts. If we go over here and we change it, let's just change it to the highest that it'll let us. Five seconds. Press play. It will slowly build up to speed. I don't recommend doing that unless you're doing kind of like a DJ transition trick or something or you want the cool sound of it speeding up, then you can. And then the same thing with the stop time. So... You press stop and it's off, just like a play pause button would be on your on a CD player or if you're watching YouTube or something. Now, if we do the stop time all the way up, you get that crashing sound. It sounds like the BPM is slowing down. I would only recommend this for doing a DJ trick where you go from a very large BPM to a small BPM. There's really no other reason why I would keep this on unless you are used to it from DJing with vinyl, of course. So that was our general settings. Here in device, I'll talk about in another in another video. This is if you have accessories plugged in, such as headphone splitters or any type of DJ controller. You can control the outputs, control the pre cue and stuff like that. Sound settings, I would leave them over here. This is your, your mixer, EQ classic, filter residence, all this stuff. Down here, volume, audio limiter. This is another safety feature. I would keep it on. It prevents clipping and prevents the possibility of damaging either your speakers or if you're using someone else's. It's just a good idea to have it on. Next is auto gain. So with this app, the gain controls are really small. The gain control is actually this little slider here that's almost impossible to use. So most DJs are used to using the gain all, uh, all the time through their set while they're DJing. In this app, if it's for the laptop or the iPad or even the phone, I would recommend keeping auto gain on. It does a really great job of adjusting the gain automatically so that you don't have to. And it's really great, really advanced. And I would just leave this on and not worry about the gain if you can. Auto mix, these are the same settings that you could change in the auto mix section. I made a couple of videos about auto mix. You guys could check that out. The library, I would leave it on the settings that it gives us. Nothing really to do here. Appearance, cue point st style, I would keep them on high contrast. So we're going to go open up our cue points. So it makes it a little bit easier to see. And it, it makes them stand out a little bit better. So I would leave it at that. Start cue point, I would leave that set and jump. Jog wheels, see how these are light? You could change it to dark. Or you could change it to extended. I would recommend leaving it at extended because the bigger the surface area of the jog wheel, the more control you have for scratching and adjusting your track. But if it's easier to see, depending on which setting that, which if you're DJing outside during the day or something, you might want to keep it on light. So I wouldn't recommend dark, either light or extended, depending on the environment that you're DJing in. Now here's another setting that I just discovered. So, so he, here these are. We have our waveforms. So there is our waveforms there. Now I have high contrast selected. Look how beautiful these stand out. If I turn it off, then it becomes pretty much the same color as the background. It makes it harder to see. I don't know why anyone would turn that off. So I would keep high contrast on so you could see the beautiful color differences in your waveforms, have an idea of what's going on. Next is Minute Marker. This just gives you an idea of how many minutes in the song you are by looking at your waveforms. I would leave that on. And then we have this one, which is really cool. Dim Inactive Deck. So now the crossfaders in the middle, volume faders are up. Both decks are the same brightness. Now if I move the crossfader to the right with this setting on, see that this waveform at the top? That's the left deck. I'm moving the crossfader to the right. So now it becomes really dark. So now just by looking at this, looking at your waveforms, you could tell which 
track has the volume, which one has full volume, which one has no volume, which one's active. It's really helpful. And it's not just for the crossfader. It actually is controlled with the volume sliders too. So it's a really easy way to tell if your track is selected. If you turn it off, it'll just be like how it is on the iPad on the phone and moving the crossfader and the decks being active or not does not make a difference. So I would leave that on. Over here are library settings. I would leave these the way they are. Next. And these are the settings that I would recommend using for this amazing app. And if you guys want to see my full beginner tutorial for this amazing app, check out this video over here. Thank you.